Um, hi. Um, can those in the Zoom can hear me? Yes. Good, good, good. I'm sorry for late start because of the IT issue here. Um, they have some uh, interesting uh, features. So let me get started. Uh, I apologize. So we'll cut short about the, the break uh, later to, to catch up the time. So um, okay, let me start by sharing the screen. Um, So we go by uh, starting from the cross line. Uh, those in the Zoom, can you see the cross line? Yes. Okay. So we go by the cross line. Um, so it's about me. Uh, to save time, just uh, don't me anymore. And uh, uh the TA uh, to save time, uh, no, no talking about TA. So just any case, just email. And um, the course description. So um, this is uh, a class that try to give you the basic tools to do statistics. So we have uh, usually it's a two course sequence, but uh, in B school, we combine to one. Actually in my day, in my old days, when I was an undergraduate student, I said two courses, but now they combine to one. Um, uh, so we are focusing on uh, a lot of stuff, but uh, so we we'll cut corners, but uh, anyway, we will able to uh, able you to encrypt you with uh, things to do, to do statistical analysis. So learning outcome, I'm not going to talk about more details on it. Uh, I guess this is uh, something you care what we are covering. So, <clears throat> so basically for, um, Later we see the uh, timetable. We go over one by one when we talk about what. But um, but I guess the most uh, thing you care about this class is the assessment. Okay. So um, the half of the course will be uh, based on the outcome of a test because it's a statistical class. So but basically we will do a closed book exam. Uh, but it's not really exam uh, in the sense that it's not centralized. Uh, the reason we don't do centralized is because we have uh, some student is going to be uh, not in Hong Kong. So what we will do is uh, I'll lay out what we have been doing last year. So we will do a, uh, uh, for those in Hong Kong, we probably do a uh, on-site exam. Those do online with same time, we do it online. Okay. And uh, so to avoid uh, organizational issues, just we will do a test uh, hopefully the at the last week of the semester, possibly Friday. Uh, but I will just uh, send an email to try to see if it's okay. Okay. Uh, maybe Thursday or Friday. Um, so the next 10% is class presentation. Um, so we'll do many things uh, just to give you some motivation to come to class. Because I know uh, having a mask is very difficult. Uh, so um, that's uh, what we are doing. Oh, that's why they, don't, they can't see me. Sorry about it. taking a left of screen. So um, the next 20% of the homework, so we six assignment there, or we drop the lowest one. Um, and there will be a talk to project. So, um, so that's why uh, I'm asking you to do some ice breaking because uh, I allow your project to be done in a group form or in the, uh, individual form. Uh, uh, and uh, whether we do presentation depends on the time we have. We don't have time to do presentation. Although presentation is a very important thing, but uh, uh, it depends on the class time. In this school, suppose we have forced you to do presentation, but with math, everything, then I don't know how easy it's going to be. Uh, but uh, let's 
I will tell you more about the project later. It depends on how many people in this room at the end and from period and then decide what's the maximum number of students uh, allowed to be. Of course, two people is fine. Whether we allow three, four, or five depends on how many, how many we are. And, um, and the, whether we allow presentation, it also depends on uh, how many students you have here at the end. Um, so for the textbook, um, I actually got it this morning. A mail box. Yes. So, as you can see, can you see from the from the zoom? And hear anything? Maybe they're gone. Yes. So this is textbook. Uh, you may buy or not to buy. Uh, uh, they do get the slides. I guess uh, you want to buy or buy. This is, this is a standard textbook across all the other textbooks. And last year I used the older version. Doesn't mean nothing. So you can use any version. Uh, you can go back to seven version, any any version we show because statistics cannot be changed for at least uh, 20 to 25 years. Actually, it is almost the same thing as I learned when I was a student. So it's nothing updated uh, from then. Um, but you really, uh, if you really want, oh, someone is coming. Okay. Um, if you really want, if you really want to uh, learn more, there's uh, some reference book here you may want to uh, turn to. But uh, this is just for uh, more advanced people. Um, course evaluation at the end. Um, this will be the Line. So today uh, we will do some descriptive statistics um, for two classes and we'll do probability. And this, what is first one, descriptive statistics is basically what you learn in the uh, high school or even elementary school, right? We learn how to, even in data, how we try to describe the data. Okay? I mean, the data is a huge, humongous stuff. And how to make sense of it is the first thing we're going to do. Okay, uh, we are not going to talk about how to get data, although it's very important. Uh, I think that we don't have time to go over that. Uh, we are, we just assume the data already, uh, which is usually the case because we usually do the uh, we usually use the data from secondary source. Okay, and of course it's in, sometimes important to collect data directly, but this is not the goal of this class. We are not going to. Uh, Talk about how to collect data. If you wish to learn, you could uh, try to try textbook or other courses to talk about how to collect data. Um, and once we know how to collect data, and we want, we try to learn how to use the data to make some uh, what we call uses, right? Because collect data is just only uh, unable to collect everything what we want to study, right? Suppose you want to know. Uh, how many people uh, hate wearing masks? Okay. Uh, maybe someone like it, I don't know, but but you have to ask every people in Hong Kong to know the answer, right? And, but we never have time to ask everybody, right? So we have to only ask some people to collect some data on them. And how can we try to use data, this data to tell what's going on in the whole picture is the statistic, right? So, that's why we need to study probability. The reason is we are not going to uh, obtain anything in the same picture. We try to collect something from the small sample or collect something there. We try to infer, try to guess what happened in the big picture. Okay, look at the small one. Okay, try to guess the big one. And in in that case, we need probability. Okay, and there are two more details about probability. And then we we'll talk about um, some sampling distribution, which is trying to tell you how to do sampling. Yeah, you see what was the underlying characteristic of when you look at a small item, try to infer the picture, what would you able to get, right? And you try to do estimation. Uh, so basically the first five topics prepare you to do the following thing. So first five usually is not very useful. Um, uh, because once you get a 
we try to get the data and try to and um, the topic seven is a rather important topic is trying to see whether you do the test many of you are from the PAC right and uh, one of them is do is the uh, important thing you do is audit right? when the audit is you uh, that's actually learned from my wife because my wife was an auditor uh, uh, now he's an auditing professor in Singapore uh, and, uh, and you go to audit and then you really are able to look so you go, go to check in right? and you cannot check every single item you cannot go to the warehouse to check everything right just randomly checking here or there right so that's why you need to see whether you have a hypothesis right saying that this may be no problem you want to try to check whether there's no problem, you try to sample something. Right? So that is going to audit, right? You're going to check the material statement, right? No, not accounting, so forget about anything I said because they're very loose. And same for uh, quality control, right? You try to see, say, I don't know what's this, it's, uh, it's the orange juice, right? And you try to claim in this uh, point, try to claim how many vitamin C they have. Right, how many days of that, right? And if you're a consumer council, then you need to check whether their claim is correct. So this is fine. Okay. Okay. That's the same when you go to courtroom, right? You go to the courtroom, the judge will assume you are not guilty until the evidence so is beyond reasonable doubt. Okay, that is important. Okay, it's very useful in uh, uh, a lot of cases. And uh, for example, is try to uh, to compare two different samples and why you need to compare two different samples uh, very often the used um, when you talk about you know you don't get into the marketing when you're marketing you want to see what have a marketing scheme a b c d e if you go to kol right if you go to the roadshow go to the do some Selling on the MLT status, many, many channels. And the single channel gives you the highest right? And in that case, you want to see you have a, before you do the compare, you have not compare, right? Compare. Okay. This is often used to experiment to, for those who are science here, but if you do experiment, this is most useful. Right? To see before and after. Most useful food, useful food for management. Right? So management practice, you want to do management practice A and B. And then there's a regression. The last two is the most most useful tool that you should be able to learn from this class. And you again expect it to do before and after. So what are these? Um so these tools are trying to do something we call the causal inquiry. Uh, although to doing it is very difficult, but we try to do it. We try to see um, if we do something that it matters. Okay. For example, we want to see whether wearing a mask is useful to prevent COVID-19. Okay. Okay. Then you would try to pick up the data will be one group of people with the mask, one people without mask, right? And then you have each day how many people who got disease with the mask without mask, right? And then we want to compare these two whether they're different. And if more than the two samples can be three samples, maybe you can see uh, the example would be you have the many vaccines as well, whether they are effective for COVID 19, you want to see this uh, vaccine A, vaccine B. Vaccine C, vaccine D, mask, the mask, right? So there are many kind of vaccines. So most of, more than two will be add up. Okay, so that's just the most useful. The last one is the testimony regression. If, if you want to study the, I think the 2021, I guess, I think one would be basically doing only this for the, for the whole course. So you can see actually regression is basically General attitude. Actually, 
Any question on this one? Any question from the Zoom? Good. So, um, so this honesty, uh, I guess uh, many of you, some of you ask you whether we need this one for this class because you are math class. So I don't know. It's only the answer is no because uh, you will be doing math, so I'm not sure whether the system can work for that. I think if I need you to use it, then I would explicitly ask you to do it. So the assumption is no for our class. Uh, for this, uh, you do need to do the uh, plagiarism test because, uh, of course, I'm not saying that you are allowed to copy answers from each other, right? but uh, for this class, uh, it's not a written thing, it's very difficult to do. Uh, any questions? Um, before we have a break, um, we just cut the sort of five minutes break. Uh, I think it's okay because uh, just a uh, uh, little bit slow for this today. Um, just so uh, if you go to the uh, blackboard, you will see uh, this book I upload. So uh, this book I just written. Uh, just press copy. And um, this book is uh, uh, is the uh, everything I have for this class. So you can read. Uh, if you don't want to buy textbook, then you can uh, look at this book. Uh, this is a short book. Uh, but uh, I guess if you're the slide, then you don't it doesn't really matter. And uh, this is just provide a little bit more information from the slide, so you can use it. If you have the slide, you just fine. And the only thing is in this no, but not not in this slide is uh, the slide have uh, a programming. Uh, I have yet the time to write a book for programming. Yet, uh, but later maybe I'll try and write that for now. This semester, sorry, I, uh, I don't have the book for programming. But this one, uh, you can just take out and then uh, I think uh, that's everything we need from this. Uh, one important thing, I mean, you want to look at this one is uh, uh, in this book, I have an uh, exercise. So I have an uh, exercise here, and then it includes the, uh, this is uh, basically the uh, last year of the quiz, in class quiz, and I put it there. Uh, Want to do? I mean, I hope you uh, your time. You go home and try to work it out by yourself. 
And uh, so, uh, is there a question? Uh, about the course, about everything? Uh, we talk about? Because we have a rather small class to be to us, I mean, we just say talk there. Any concern, query, and stuff? Um, so then we have a five minute break. And if you want to drop the course, then, then you can just silently leave. Uh, and then we we'll come back in five minute time. And then, uh, uh, sorry for this, this time we have a shorter break. Uh, but next time we have a regular break. Okay? Because uh, today we have some uh, regularity. So let's have a break for five minutes and we come back on uh, 10, 25. I mean, look at the clock, it's 10, 30. Okay, that clock is faster than my clock. I'm going to that clock. Okay, have a break. Uh, for the Zoom, Zoom people, can have a break, drink coffee or go to whatever you like, okay? I'm here to answer any question you might have. Those who want to look at the book uh, can come out and check. If you want to look at the book before you buy. You come and give me your student ID. Or you can email me later. If you're not in a hurry, then maybe you can send me an email. I try to see.
your year one haven't enrolled, then I can either do it or I can do it. Yeah, so you can go to check. So I put the all the slide for the whole semester is there. So you can just check. Get something you want for you. So I guess I should start because of uh, some questions. Uh, I guess I should start because uh, time is precious. Any questions? No? If no, then we just get started. Uh, Maybe I could tell the Zoom people. Uh, we 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 zoom the class, okay? So we will be uh, doing the slide. So we'll do the slide. Descriptive statistics. now with more fun. So um, we do descriptive statistics. So <clears throat> um, why we uh, want to do it is I men mentioned that there are two parts, usually separate two courses, but in B school, uh, we try to save our time. So we combine two classes together. So classically, this, the first part will be descriptive statistics. So we have seen, uh, we have uh, to try to give a clear picture of the data. So it's given a data, how we use it, right? And uh, some bar chart, some pie chart, the mean, the variance that we do. Actually, you should have learned that in your high school. So this class should not be difficult for you, but there will be some technical difference between uh, what you learn in high school and what is covered here. There's some technical difference. And, um, after that, we will learn probability. I mean, I'm not going to repeat what we cover, but uh, and the second part, we just try to use the data right, to do inference or do analysis. Okay, and uh, this is the most important part, right? As you would uh, imagine, right? This will be the uh, important part. But we have to learn the first part before we know how to proceed the second. Okay, so the blue part is. Uh, so today we will talk about the Wisto representation and numerical one. And Wisto one, I guess you face it every day, you see a lot of charts. Uh, so that's why we're not going to spend time on it. Okay, we'll just very briefly go over it and focus on numerical representation, which is uh, some of you may be less familiar with because of so many different measures. Uh, but uh, let's get started. So to get started, uh, we need to uh, learn something. Definition is the data. And because of the way of data is, it, it will determine how we analyze it and how we present it and how it can be used. Okay. Um, you is usually you will be considered two type of data. One is categorical, one is numerical. Categorical actually means it's by category, okay? Say for example, a nominal means is uh, have uh, Data may be coded in numbers, but has no meaning. Say gender, uh, sometimes you say gen male is one, female is zero, but means nothing about one and zero. Okay? And races, you may have okay, two cents and races to be one, two, three, four, five, six, but races by itself cannot be ordered. Order has no meaning, right? So it's nominal. It's, it may assign number to the category, but itself is no meaning, it's nominal. And the other one is, uh, this one, you usually see gender, race, you see the number of no meaning. But a lot of time, data of the ordinal is a lot of uh, thing that you often calculate some operation there, but also usually that's, the meaning will be uh, suspicious, okay? Like the ranking, okay? Where often you see the like, likelihood scale, strongly agree, disagree, neutral, agree, agree, 
for those who have been here for one year, you know you do cost evaluation, right? You do, you play me, right? Play the TA, and you say strongly if the risk is zero or one, and you sort of use it to buy that. Or you go to look at the online review, right? You will see zero star up to one five star, right? But in all the domains, that's all that matter. Okay, you just say one is bigger than zero, two is bigger than one, right? But it doesn't say that the difference between four and five is same different one and zero. Okay, there's no such thing. So that means that when you calculate average or mean later, not to couple later, those things actually mean very little, right? Because for more maybe meaningful later you see, but probably the mean of those things is somewhat maybe indicative, but it's subjective. So you have to be very careful about what the data you're doing. You cannot just blindly apply tenant reviews. And in fact, uh, if you go into detail, you will see you will have a separate study for category data. Okay? You go to advanced study class, they have actually category data analysis, focused on category data. And those who want to use it will be those who are doing marketing, psychology and those people they actually care about those sociology they psychology they care about a lot of this data and they use that. And um, just to remind you that you calculate the mean or variance or those things is not really useful. Okay, you have to be careful what you should apply. Okay. And uh, we will focus on actually today is the numerical data. And uh, usually the two types of data you see is called discrete and continuous. Again, this philosophical question, okay? Discrete means you can count them, okay? One, two, three, four, five, number of children, number of people got infected, okay? But discrete, it means that for any two observation, observation, uh, there's nothing in the middle, okay? What is the meaning of 1.5 number of children? Doesn't mean anything. Right, fetus or no? No, there's nothing like this, right? So, count is uh, discrete, right? And continuous means that anything, any measurement, any true measurements, you can get average of them, you can it's still a valid method, right? Temperature stop right? Any, you take any two things and take the average still a observation. Of course, there's a limit to how you can do this, right? If you learn physics, then you learn there's a uh, and so the feasible that you cannot match accurately for everything, but just to set this philosophical idea aside, continuous means that anything in the middle you can you can think there's a lot of possible values. Okay. For finance or accounting data, it's okay to do uh, consider continuous numbers, right? And many of numbers sometimes come, right? Uh, the reason why we have to distinguish distinguish these two um, is because later uh, we put, if you remember our syllabus here, we have a chapter topic three and chapter four with a discrete probability distribution and continuous actually correspond to that. And different way to measure it, and different way to do things. And then remember, when you do ANOVA, right, it's analyzing actually a discrete or count the variable over a continuous variable. Same as in a version, you can allow anything. So the regression is most susceptible uh, to sequence. And this one is we're trying to have different category and we have a uh, different measure. Any question? Okay. So not going to talk about this, but just give you some idea. Uh, different data will tell us what kind of chart we are going to do. We mentioned it because later when we cover the R program and review with it, okay? And uh, of course, uh, uh, this discrete and condensed data and ordinal data, all these things actually matter when you define in R program. You define data set, you can tell them the data, you are doing the ordinal data, you're doing discrete data computation. Uh, why? Because uh, if you condense data, the data storage is different. Those who know computer science will know to store the data, it really depends on how complicated they are, right? And this is much simpler than continuous and all the different ones. So that, that's why we talk about that because uh, this also will be important when you talk about program. Okay. 
Um, and I'm not going to detail. I hope you know it from your high school. If you don't know, then just ask. Okay, or ask the TA or read the textbook. It's uh, when you try to represent a categorical discrete data, you use a bar stuff pie chart. And when you call this data, you do this program of polygon. Okay. And when you try to know the result to variable, you will set up for a pie chart. Okay. We're not going to cover more here because uh, we when cover our programming, we talk about how to plot this using R or XF. Okay, so we are not going to uh, cover this detail here. Okay, so uh, but I hope you learn it. Uh, anyone who haven't learned this? Okay, then I assume this is right. Okay, maybe I should ask that way. Anyone raise your hand if you learned this before? And that's good that everyone has learned it. I mean, if you have questions, just ask me because I don't want to cover things that is too trivial. So the first thing we learn in descriptive statistics is uh, we have a free numerical representation okay, or a data set. Okay? So uh, the first type is called central tendency. Okay? What the central tendency means is we're trying to use single number, one number to represent data set. The, every, the most common thing is mean, median, mode, actually used all the time. And that's exactly what you should know because with data, we want to know what is going on. Then you want to find the mean, median, mode. And when you do the project, um, not necessarily for this class, but for every uh, numerical study, you can look at whatever you see. They always report it, summer statistics. That would all, always prove at least one of them. Mean is always included. Uh, median or mode depends on what you do. And you may ask them why we need mode, right? Uh, of course, we details tell you what they are. But what we need mode? And as we said, uh, sometimes calculating average or median doesn't mean a lot of stuff. That's what we need mode. Okay. But anyway, um, the next one is dispersion. Okay. And Actually, this is trying to uh, give you the idea of how accurate the central tendency is. Okay, the central tendency is given one number. And we're trying to ask how this number is so good to represent the whole data set. If the dispersion is small, the data is concentrated around the central tendency, then there's a good. If it's far away, then it's bad. So we want to use this number to tell us how accurate the central tendency is. Okay. So that is someone something you know very well, maybe called variance, standard deviation, provisional variation, those kind of things we cover. Um in the fatal range, range, those kind of things you learn in high school, but uh we just repeat a little bit because uh after a few years probably you forget everything. Right? So um the next thing is shape and this is something that uh, I I guess you don't learn it in the high school, do you? High school, right? So the shape. So this is uh, tendency is measuring the whole data set. You just get a single point there, okay? And this person is asking you to see how well, how well the how representative of the central tendency is, right? It's how spread out the data is, and then tell you about whether the data is on low, most of data are less than the mean or more than we're still on that. And why you care about this skill? Okay. And why you care about this? It's about inequality. The most important thing is for those who learn, uh, I don't know whether you know, but recently there's a lot of people talk about inequality in the world or in, uh, in China, right? It's all about uh, getting rich together, right? Is that about inequality, right? Actually, the, now people talk about, about occupying uh, Wall Street, right? That's a big thing about inequality, right? Because it's a lot of things are considered on the lower end, right? The income or the wealth is considered on the, those which kill people, that's why it's there, right? And, for those, I don't know anyone who don't want to do finance, but if you do finance or insurance or also 
accountant to carve out the risk, right? Not the risk, right? Because accountant is a risk-based accountant, right? So we don't do everything, but we just do assessment, right? We care about some tail risk, right? Um, we care about uh, catastrophic event. In that case, then why is there not tail risk? Whether tail risk is possible. And probably some of you may know, maybe you guys are too young, but 2008 financial crisis is uh, coming from, uh, some people said it's due to the mismeasurement of the tail risk. Okay. Or I look at, you guys are very young, I don't think you guys have gone, but uh, it's 1997. No one had gone before that, right? No one had gone before you guys. The Asia financial crisis. And it's because of starting with uh, the default of the sovereign default in the Indonesia. A lot of things, right? And this has not been calculated in their models. That's why all, all the financial models die. Because of they forget about the tail with it, the tail risk. So sometimes you learn the term called value at risk. So that's why we can't want to say. Okay. Uh, that's the uh, key thing we cover. And of, if we have time, we'll cover some what we call relationship. We have two, these are all give you one single measure, X. When you have two measure X and Y, we try to tell you how they're related. Okay. And that related to regression at the end. But, uh, I think today at most we can cover this thing. Okay. But before we start, any questions? So this is the thing we are going to cover today. Hopefully, if not, we cover for some of the next thing. So I'll be fast because uh, if you think I'm too fast, let me know because it's something you know well already. I hope. So sentence mean, median, mode. Okay. Uh, some notation here. Um, we will call number of operation is n, okay? And when we n observation, we have x1, x2 of the xn, okay? And a finite number, it's a natural number, one to four, five. And we call submission notation. Uh, this is sigma. I1 up to n is x sub i is x1 up to xn, just adding one, okay? And some notation we call the floor and the ceiling. Floor means you just, Look at the integer, forget about the decrement. Okay. And ceiling means that you would take the largest integer. Wait, it's a smaller integer that's larger than the number. But uh, you'll be clear why why we do that. And next one because all the data. Uh, data observation, we have one to n, x one to x n, but we don't say. They can be larger or smaller, but uh, sometimes it's very useful to order data from smallest to largest. When you excel or you out, you easily get the largest. Okay, to sort that. Uh, why we do that? Because when we sort, then we get uh, helpful to us to calculate some kind of dispersion measure. Later you will see. Okay, the sort it just means that you just rank them from the smaller to the biggest. Okay, and frequency means. Yeah, frequency I will talk about in the next slide. So suppose the data one, two, two, three. Okay. Frequency of one is one, frequency of three is three, frequency of two is two. Is that okay? This number of this tally. Um, and the next one is called the conversion table. Uh, this saying that we have 80 students in total, 15 of the male pass, 25 of them fail. Okay, total male is 40. For the female, 20 plus and the okay? So just terminology, I hope that's okay. So let's get started, mean, okay? Um, I hope everyone knows it, right? Everyone knows it, it's just adding every observation and divide by total of them, okay? There's nothing deep here, okay? But uh, probably you may ask what it actually is, right? And actually is you just, what you're doing is trying to get a single data point that has equal distance of all. Okay. 
So it will be something like this. So this is data suppose, this lumber line, uh, the more right hand side figure, right? Suppose there's two data points here. So what is the mean will be this stop that will be equal distance of the two. Right, so that's why it's mean the middle. And you have more data point somewhere here. Then you will be, uh, the distance on the left is same distance on the right. So this is more like physics ID. It's the center of the graph ID. Uh, but uh, it means that if you take the distance, left will be negative, right positive, add them all up will be zero. So that is the meaning of the, why we call the center side center point that distance from the point. So this is the basic one. And the example will be in this, right? I'm not going to do the calculation, but you just, you have five data points, add them all up the other five, so the number you want. And if you have one, two, three, four, 50, again, you add them up the other five, it'll be 12. But you can easily see that if the last data point is substantially larger, then the same will solve a lot. And this 12, we actually take up all the other numbers besides the last one. Okay? This is what happened, right? These are the income of ordinary people. This is the rich guy, right? And it looks like they're very rich, but they're not, right? So that's why when you look at the, I don't know whether it's like economics, then you learn the GDP per capita, right? Maybe a good measure. Uh, for the wealth economy, but it's a good measure how which people they are, then you look at the income of the people rather than look at the GDP. Because always this one guy is making a lot of money, um, it's not telling you the big picture, right? So this outlier can change a lot. So that's why we need to do various things. Um, the two ways to check out the uh, Smooth out the data outlier. Okay. When you see the, uh, the black one, it means it's technical. So we don't have to, you don't follow, you don't follow, it doesn't really matter. And the blue one means uh, uh, very important. So you should remember it when you do the exam. The green one is a sample. So just for you to understand what's going on. And the black one is sometimes an uh, uh, important thing that I want you to know. but because of, uh, uh, we don't want you to cram you too much. So just if you get it, then it's okay. You don't get it, it doesn't mean you don't, don't do so bad. Because you will, you, if you go on doing statistics in the future, then you are obviously not. Okay. But just for about two minor points that when you handle, handle all life, one is called trimming, one is called winds are rising. Okay. The trimming is very simple. With all life, just drop it. Okay. Just like when you do, when you look, try to look at the income of the general public of Hong Kong, what are you going to do? I am to go, going to ask the car thing, no. I'm going to go to China, go to ask the car thing, no. Just forget about those people, right? So put them out. It's very simple, just a treatment, just cut it, okay? And you, how many to cut? Maybe you cut the largest one, largest 5%, largest 3%. Uh, in R or other software, it's easy to do that. Cut out the largest 5%. And and the other is called winds arising. Okay. Winds arising means that you are just uh, replacing the largest smallest number uh, by the less extreme number. In that case, instead of 50, you replace by replacing the largest number. Is that, is that, is that clear? Uh, of course, these two are, if you have a software, you can just, just click one button and it's done. Okay? I'm just telling you what are the ways to do it. And when you apply in practice, it's very important to try to do it. When you collect some data, it looks very weird, you have to handle it. If the data is often very dirty, you have to clean it up before you can use it. The more data, you usually not very good. Um,
So um, average, with an average, there's actually many, many other averages. And sometimes those averages are more, more important. It's called weighted average, okay? Each, each observation is associated with weights called WI, okay? And to tell the mean, you have to multiply each observation by its own weights and divide by some of the weights, okay? The thing that you know the most is called GPA, right? Everyone knows it's a weighted average, right? Because like in CHK, probably the only unique thing in Hong Kong is we have a PE class, right? And also have, uh, I think, college class course, right? PE course only worth one credit, which is I feel correct. And even you get A in that class, you cannot come and say a C in this class, right? Because this class is four credit, it's very important. So pay more attention to this class, right? I mean, I'm not saying that P is not important. P is very important, okay? Healthy, physical health is very important than and many, many things. But in terms of great, calculate the great GPA, uh, then suppose you get A from this class, C from the PE, A is better than you see the other way around. Of course, for personal development, I think you get A, a and P is better. But for the GPA sake, uh, you want the other way around, right? Because uh, this class would carry four, the way we fall, P we won. Right? That's how we take the GPA. And right, there's no finance people here, but uh, a lot of time you call the moving average. Uh, Sometimes you, you would say the more recent price is not more important, right? Uh, regardless of how the distant path is doing, uh, how to calculate that is very simple. Uh, you would look at the price of today, yesterday, the day before, up on, and you put a lot of weight on today. Okay, maybe you calculate 50 days moving average. Today's weight is 50. Yesterday was 49, for example. Okay, each way you can do that. That's the template. Uh, maybe just example. Say maybe the price. Price of uh, maybe price, maybe price of today, right? Price of yesterday, they have me the right thing. The same thing. Maybe this is weight, is you calculate 50 days before, 50, and this weight will be 49. Which is 48. Okay. What you do is you would be, so you'll be multiply this, right? And then divided by some of the weights. Okay. Uh, this way is uh, linear, but you can do exponential. But uh, we're not talking about financial, that's the case. And the way we often you calculate portfolio return, right? It's the rate of return for each investment and the weights are your. Uh, waiting in the portfolio. And more common, you will see the stock index. Okay? Every day you see the hands index is a weighted average. So the price movement for a basket of stocks and the weighting for each stock depends on capitalization. Right? The larger the company movement is more important. Right? So that's why you often see this. So that's why you need stock weighted average. Uh, any question? No. So there are two other mean is very important. It's called geometric mean and harmonic mean. Okay. And geometric mean, uh, for those who do finance, then you will know that it's a very important thing. Uh, you learn the simple return and the compound return. And geometric mean is asking you to do the compound return. And the Normal arithmetic mean is the simple return. Harmonic mean is uh, actually something you use more in the physics, but actually it's also useful in finance. Right. 
So let me give example. So this is the weighted data. And normal mean just add them all five number up the other five, which is three. But the weighted mean will be multiplied by the weight. One times six, two times three, three times two, four times three, five times two divided by some of the weight. Okay. And this you can see the weighted average smaller than the average. The reason why is the number one, which is the small num smallest number of a high weight. Okay, so that's why uh, weighting is important. Okay, and the next thing is then finance will be a very standard thing. Uh, suppose you have two investment choice. The first one gives you ten percent return year. The second one is ninety. Uh, looks like a heavy investment. You have to invest a lot first before you can receive a good return. The second one is fifty per year. Looks like you, you use a simple average, the same return, because uh, the average return for the both is 50%, right? Because 10% plus 90% divided by 2 is 50%. And total return the same, right? But if we do compound return, suppose you get the return and then return, uh, you get to reinvest again. Okay? In that case, the second one is 90 one point five times one point five, and um, and in that case, you choose to go back to mean. Okay. That is the mean that is better to better than the average. Okay, so this is the mean. Uh, not technical detail, but just remember the mean. Of course, you know it. You just add in all the data and the other number of them. Okay, very simple. It's foolproof. Nothing you can do wrong. So the second one is median. And then we see the mean can affect by our outlier and median will not be. The reason is it's asking exactly what exactly the number in the middle. Okay, it doesn't matter whether the, the large one get larger, smaller one gets smaller, whether you get the rich recasting in the income data, right? Doesn't really matter. Okay. And what do we mean by exactly the middle? And that will be a Difficult thing to say, right? Because if you have odd number of data, there's a middle, right? Because say one, two, three, number three, one, two, three, the data set, two is exactly middle, right? One on the left, on the right. Okay. So that's when you have odd number, you just n plus one number two, right? Because you have three data, three number, right? Three plus one is four, four divided by two is two, right? The second. Okay, so that's nothing. Suppose you have five. Observations, right? The exact middle is three, right? Because five times one, so five plus one over two. Okay. Because three is two on the left, two on the right. Okay? So there's no problem. But when we even, what do you mean by middle? Suppose the observation is one and two, what's middle? One or two? Okay? So in that case, we do a compromise, we do a mean of the two middle. Okay? Suppose observation is one and two. And then both are the middle. So the average is 1.5. Okay. So that's why look at these two formula looks very simple. But when we want to combine them, we need to use some more technical things. Like the path of the two, okay, you run up and run down. Okay. If it's the same, actually it doesn't mean this. If it's the same. If it's the odd case, then it's the same thing, right? So one, one, down, it's the same thing. But when they're not, right? Then you want to run up and run down, then you use this. Okay? Now, uh, how to convince you this is right? Let's see example. Say, two, one, two, three, the middle is two, right? And one, two, three, four, five, and then will be, the middle will be, Remember, it's m plus one over two. So the data set we have is four plus one is five. Five over two is two point five. Run down with two, run up would be three. So it's data of the data, the second data and the the third data. Okay, the same for this one. Okay. And you can see, even though I have changed the last number to, from four to forty, the medium is the same. So that's a good thing, okay? And again, because median, so 
an F right here. So you're adding something to the top operation. Mean or F right here. You that means you be very careful when 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 you use uh ordinal data. Okay. For cardinal data is fine. But when you order data by the lightning scale, not clear what it means. Okay. Sometimes you can't even use it. Right? Say, how do you come to school? Okay. Maybe someone drive, maybe someone do taxi, maybe someone do whatever mean, right? What is the meaning of mean? What is the meaning of mean? No mean. Right? Because you cannot do anything about them. So that means that you have to be left with one way to do it. Only way is to do mole. Um, mole is just look at the frequency table, look at the one that is max. Okay. And it could be more than one. Okay. The only drawback of mole is because we want to use single number, but often time is not often time, but sometimes it can more than one number. Okay. And um so it depends on how you define this. Sometimes uh, when FB observation only appear once in some textbook, it doesn't it doesn't say the mode exists. Okay, say so suppose data one two three. Okay, every data only appear once. Okay, so that's why there's no no mode in those uh, in the text. But we would uh, use the convention that e if you appear once, you still take all of them. Okay? Just to. So in that case, one, two, three, four, in some textbook, you say, uh, you will say there's no more, but we just use the convention that we still take everything there. Okay? If one, two, two, three, three, four will be two and three because appear twice. If one, two, 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 three, three, four will be two. Okay? So now we come to. Uh, IQR, what do you think of this two figures? 11 minutes. So I think we can cover the first two. So, range, remember what we try to do this first is try to tell you how accurate the mean, median, or mode they are. Okay? So, the first thing is try to look at how dispersed the data is, right? Because if concentrate in the center, that's fine, right? So, how dispersed they are. The one very natural thing to do is called range. How this part they are is very simple. Let's take out the biggest and the smallest. The difference, right? Difference. And they are shorter even to take the time. Right? And even though it's measuring the dispersion, the difference, and in fact itself is also east left of outlier. Right? You want to measure the outlier and actually also affect the outlier. What do you mean by that? Look at the two data sets. Um, the first one is slightly around the mean three, right? The median three, but um, the range is four. The next one, the range is 49. Okay, of course, it did a good job in telling you that the second data set is much dispersed than the first one. There's no doubt. But suppose you change from 50 to five, 500. Both by right? So, especially when you have a lot of data, the range is only affected by the biggest and smallest, that will be very dangerous because the data collection will not be very clear. So, maybe the one who was putting down the knock may make a mistake, add one more zero, right? What we call the fat, fat finger, right? The type thing, add one more zero is very natural, right? So, when you do the hand write written form, a lot of mistakes can happen. Right, if you look at the news yesterday, right, that old man going to claim the cash from the government, right, and they write the form wrongly, that they probably end up fighting with each other, right. So, form filling can be a lot of time can be uh, error error ridden. Okay, so that's why we want to um, the other one we call quartiles. Okay, tiles. Uh, is something that you in English is tiles, right? It's something you see in the in the uh, in the toilet. I think in the tile over there you see tile, right? The square stuff. Quartile means you divide it into four 
different squares. Okay. So basically, if the data set is divided into four different parts, okay. and this largest is a minimum, is a maximum, okay. and for range, it's actually saying this, right? Largest and smallest, right? And we know that this is called the median, right? Or sometimes called Q2. Okay. And to look at the median and the minimum, do the median again. This we'll call Q1. Okay. Look at the median and the maximum. Do a median again. Okay. So then the difference between Q1 and Q3 is called intercostal range, IPR. Okay. So intuitively, let me repeat max and mean the difference is called the range. Max and mean, you do the middle, median. They call the first cut. Okay. And this is called Q2, okay, we know it's median. And between the median and the minimum, we do a median again, okay? Median of the median of second, median of the first part of data is called Q1, called the first quartile. Median of second part is called Q3, okay? The distance between the, these two cuts will be called in the quartile range. So then, regardless of how this data behave, how they go bigger and go this smaller doesn't really affecting the quantile, okay? The measure, okay? And the meaning is like this, right? The first quartile is the first quarter of data. Q2 is the median, right? Half of data. And third quartile is the uh, three fourths of data, okay? There's nothing new here, okay? But the technical part is, how do you define this? Okay, that is a very technical question. That will see. So that will be this Q T minus Q1. Okay. And how to define this Q1 and Q3? Conceptually it's very easy. But how to define exactly as Q3 and Q1? I can tell you you look at the software program, at least there are nine different ways to do it. Okay, you have to check the menu. So we will only give you three different ways. Uh, the first two ways is something you you, don't, you may have learned in your high school. The last one will be, I think, the standard way. Uh, I mean, standard means that's what we do the alpha when we import. So the first two ways actually use the median. I mean, you do the median and do the two median. It's actually clean and easy. Okay. The only difference between one and method one and method two is whether you use the median in your cut. Okay, you take a data, you take a median. Whether you include this median when you calculate second median. Okay, we will we will make it very clear later. The first one uh, include the median, the second does not. Okay, maybe I give you an example to see first because so. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Office, the median is three. Okay. And method one will tell you that the lower half is the data is one, two, three. We put the median. And one, two, three, the median is two. Right? So that's why Q1 is two. And the upper half of the data is three, four, five. Method one will include the median. So three, four, five, the median is four. So the interquartile range is four minus two. So that's it. Okay. And method two will be saying you shouldn't include the median. Okay. That means that if you have median is three, you will take one two, and one two the median is one point five. Okay. And the upper half is four and five. The median will be uh, four point five. And difference will be three, okay? So you can see this, uh, it depends on the method you calculate, okay? But of course, the data set is large, it's gonna be less. 
but uh, when it's that small, that would be it'll be easy. Okay. And another example will tell you one, two, three, four, five, six. When you choose a number, okay, of observation, these two methods the same. Okay. Why? Because the median is not in the data set, which is the mid middle of three and four is three point five, right? In that case, regardless of method one, method two, always give you uh, the same line, right? Because the lower half is always one, two, three, upper half is uh, four, four, five, six. That means that Q1 is two, Q3 is five, five minus three, okay? That's a big So what I want to highlight to you to the last two minutes, hopefully it's a little bit enough time, is to, this uh, um, so let this one to be a small function which means that uh, we have integer mass. So the formula, uh, a little bit complicated, okay, is asking you to what we call to do interpolation, okay. Um, so Maybe this is a little bit complicated. I saw example, that would be easy, okay? So, um, what we're doing um, is asking that, because we do uh, n plus one over four, right? So at the end, you divide the four, uh, you will get the number, the decimal number with two parts, 25, 0.25, 0.5, and 0.75, right? So you want to say, suppose the data you get is point, uh, say it's 2.25. Then what we're gonna do is you get a second data, okay? So the number maybe you get is say 2.25. Okay. So what we're gonna do is you have the data number two, number three, so you should get the interpolation for this one, okay? So you should get this number plus 0.25 of this number. So it will be x2 plus 0.25 x3 minus x2, okay? So that's right. It depends on the decimal number, interpolation is this one, okay? But I guess, I should stop because the time's up, but we'll, we'll come back and talk again about this one in the next class. So I don't, because I know bus is coming, so I let it go, but I will stay around maybe a few minutes because someone may give me this time. But I will answer the question. So uh, I will see you uh, on Wednesday, uh, very early in the morning. Hope you can wake up. So. Any question from the Zoom, we are going to off. I cannot stand here because uh, someone will be using this room. Any question? No question, then uh, you're feel free to leave. So I see you on uh, Wednesday. Oh, oh, oh. 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 Oh, oh